Good ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ILTA webinar, Time for a Timekeeping Audit. My name is Ashley, and I'll be your operator for today. At the time, all participants are in listen-only mode, and later we will conduct a question and answer session. At any time you require operator assistance, please press star zero, and an operator will be happy to assist you. I would like to turn the call over to your host for today, Virginia Basile, Vice President of Professional Services North America. Please proceed. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for attending uh, the ILTA, um, present, my ILTA presentation. Our time. I'll um, just to let you know, I'll probably take about 20 to 30 minutes uh, to do uh, uh, my presentation. And at that point, I will open it up for questions. Feel free, you know, um, so I would, I, I would, I would ask that we uh, that we hold the questions till the end of the presentation, just in terms of uh, making it uh, as timely for everybody as possible. So, um, as introduction to the topic, uh, one of the things that I do want to talk about is today's business of law, and where timekeeping is situated in the um, importance or the strategy of uh, of pro profitability for law firms. One of the things that uh, we've um, we've that we've we've come to understand is that <coughs> that the real the, the real measure for uh, Performance is a realization. The realization basically is is um, is your is what uh, invoice minus uh, any write offs uh, that you might have to uh, to incur. And as you see in the last uh, in, the, in in the in in 2015 and 2016, the trend is going in the wrong way. And that is that you know the the, the realization is trending downwards. Uh, and that is because there is a lot of um, you know, have the write-offs and changes to invoices, and some of that is uh, is directly attributed to the quality of uh, time tracking or timekeeping. Uh, one thing that we try to promote within our uh, services is uh, an understanding of the data or, or of your capture uh, capabilities or the habits of your time into the uh, to the bigger picture. Of, of of this uh, uh, of, of the business of the law firm, um, I'll, you know, that the focus lot on is um, again. Let's if we go back and talk about the time capture, um, the importance, uh, profitability of cases, analysis of you know the casework in the end, determining pricing of work or uh, alternative fee arrangements. It determine the length of engagements when we're trying to budget rates, and of course, even attorney work uh, workloads. And all of this is really um, all. Of this is, these are all important factors in managing um, our workloads, and they're only valid if the data or the capture record or the activity is uh, is valid. And by by valid, what I mean is that it has to be representative of work was done as close as possible to the event and as accurate as possible. And that is when we're entering time contemporaneously. And many, uh, many of the firms uh, are not paying, paying close attention to that metric. They're looking at time entry as part of time billing. Uh, it's after the fact. It's now into the accounting system, and that's where the problems start. Percular. When the when the time now is in the in the in your accounting application and your time and you're looking at billing for the work, there hasn't the focus on, on continuous capture is lost. We know that the capture process is always reduced amount of time between when the work was done and when the work was acted, and so all the processes within the firm in terms of capture uh, activity has to be focused uh, on reading that contemporaneous drag. And part of our timekeeping audit that we do is a lot of time looking at that metric. And we'll, we'll go into more in detail uh, as we go along. But it, it's important to understand that, you know, that looking at data as part of your WIP to more to looking at the data at the point of capture and seeing what we could do to improve quality 
exact and uh, and and loss of the, uh, of uh, um, of revenue things that I like to obviously I mean one of the, one of my favorite analogy is with you know moneyball and I don't know how many people have saw have read the book or seen the movie but it's how analytics uh, impacts uh, baseball but in this case is how analytics uh, can impact uh, um, the, and again it goes back to this concept of you know uh, the, 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 the firm being managed by WIP, and uh, especially from the time tracking perspective, right? So one of the that we're trying to change is the perception of where the focus should be in terms of. And from our perspective, obviously, it's got to it's got to be at looking at the activity, and make sure that it's as precise and as uh, as streamlined as possible. So. With the, you know, we look at you know, like you have to understand. So realizing your bias to some actual items is the most effective way of introducing change and making sure that you know that they're communicated to uh, to to the time tours. To just reiterate just what I was saying, you know, we tend to look at the end of the cycle, which is the big collection, omitting the focus on the real capture data. Um, they don't question the validity of their timekeeping data. Um, it's a foregone conclusion that there is work that could be done and improvements that can be done on a process and from a technical perspective uh, at, the, at the point of capture. And understanding the, the um, of just to what most Experiences that is a, there's a good, a good the timekeepers that typically will capture their time at the end of the week and some even at the end of the month and all that that represents in terms of not only how it impacts billable hour but also the the the, the, the profitability of the time used of uh, of the timekeeper. We have seen in certain situations where firms uh, actually did an analysis of how much it costs the firm at the end of the month. There are more senior partners and uh, uh, that carry the most, you know, the billables that are spending, you know, half a day or you know uh, around that time to, to include their time capture for the month. There's uh, that has an enormous cost on the firm on a month to month to month basis. We're not looking at the, we're not looking at the right area, uh, and so um, we I'll look about that more in a minute. So, uh, you know, more better quality, improved relation, which is, of course, very important, but also improved relationship with clients. You know, uh, your your invoice on a month-to-month -month basis is one piece of marketing that you do every month with your clients. Invoices, bills that have accurate time will have accurate nar narratives that uh, that are clear, clear done at the point of capture and not to feel like it's a narrative that was done, you know, a week later or two weeks later, when then your narrative starts sounding and uh, alike. So one of the things that we do promote is one of the things that we do ask through contemporaneous capture is this understanding of how important the quality of the narrative and that quality could only be when you when you capture it as close as possible to the event. That the exactness gets lost when you're journalizing your time or when you're going back and trying to recreate your time. So, I, um, and we're and we're getting to uh, where we're, um, we're getting to the audit, but that we end as an uh, as a services organization and how we try to help firms is that it's all about the capture. So. That the number one focus that firms should have if they're looking at their timekeeping and trying to improve it, um, and, and and this is you know what we're seeing in North America is that the average velocity of capture is four to six days. So from typically, and then entered in uh, the timekeeping system four days after it was executed, and so that requires time to go back and journalize, it produces accurate, inaccurate time uh, um, durations, and we see 
that act after on realization because those are the type of entities after that have a better chance that stand a better chance of having to be written off as opposed to contemporaneous entries. So uh, uh, firms put uh, how could make how could we make changes? We're going to be focusing on number one, which is the review of all existing time policies and measures through the audit. But you know we'll go through that and we'll look at that in detail. But after you go through that. It's the the training plan. How we train our keepers to respect the processes, but to consume the technology as best as possible, promoting any um, anytime, anywhere advice capture, and again to race also collaboration because timekeeping could also be considered a collaborative effort. And if somebody wants, you know, we could talk about that at a later time, but that's not really the the focus of the presentation. So let's keep it audit. Look at timekeeping um, for most is the quality of the time inventory. And the time story that we're looking at is the statuses of time. Now, your timekeeper solution a complete entry before an entry is accepted or that somebody could enter a time entry. That is already a barrier. Uh, one of the things that we promote is the ability to create incomplete entry, partial entries, whether they're by mobile, whether they're by their, our web interface. Um, and we invite the tellers to capture as close as possible to the event, knowing that they don't have to create the complete entry. That has always been probably the number one barrier to you know the par uh, senior attorneys participating in time capture, as especially since uh, the, uh, the the time entry has become very complex. Uh, we come across we typically come across uh, very easily uh, firms are using time entry and they might have four or five additional fields, whether task, phase, locations. Uh, uh, assigning attorneys. These are all entries now that are required by some firms at the point of entry. If you're asking you know, uh, your more seri uh, your, your attorneys to have all that information available for them at creating their time entry, that becomes probably the single, and that, that this has been the case for the last 10 years. Um, what, we, what, we, what you need to, to understand is that having a system that allows for the Partry is very beneficial to the firm because once that entry is into the keeping system, it will get turned into into a revenue entry. What two most important entry from a revenue perspective is duration and darkness of the narrative, and that's what you need for the attorney spending. Obviously, you have an attorney that has. That has, that has a that, that is that is comfortable around creating the complete entry. It has some benefit to it, but the real value to the firm is have this entry captured as close as possible to the event with a, a uh, duration and a, a a quality narrative with detail because that's in the end what is going to be important on the invoice and that's going to reduce uh, the write-offs. Now, obviously, an attorney could go back after and make the modification, but this is where the this is where this is where the uh, the, uh, the assistant comes in and can buy uh, the necessary uh, to look at to, to to fill in the, you know the, um, you know pass the phase and any other code that associated with that entry. Now, when we look at the time in, in, in our systems that allows that, what we do look is how much incomplete time is still left in the system, how, many, how much time is not, you know, wasn't time being exported quickly, how much time is ready to be exported but hasn't been exported. These are all the things that we look at initially, and, and we look at the time inventory. And from there, for example, if we see that there is an, that the, you know, that there's uh, an important amount of incomplete time, then we need to figure out why that time has not been um, analyzed and sent to the accounting system. Of course, our our and we could, our our systems have these built-in metrics also or uh, management tools to allow uh, 
people in finance to manage that on an ongoing basis. But this is something that we like to track over time. The most important, the most important thing that we look in our timekeeping audit is the velocity of capture and velocity of release. We analyze what the firm average is in terms of velocity of capture, whether it's four, four days, five days, and we like to measure that over a period of time, whether it's every six months, to understand if that, you know, based on some of the training um, efforts that we're doing, if that we could actually reduce some of that drag or make sure that that velocity gets closer and closer to one. We have tested this in the field. We've had very positive um, returns on this, where we have an effort for a firm to go from, you know, that we try to get them as close as possible to that magical number of one or two days between, in terms of velocity of capture. The release is also an important metric that, that metric that we look at, and that looks at how long that entry typically stays within uh, our uh, timekeeping system. Again, it just provides us more information as to where, from a process perspective, where we could add some additional uh, resources or where the problem may lie. Uh, like any of the, like any audit that is that is um, that is executed, it gives you a obviously it gives you a snapshot, but it also gives you an idea of where you focus your energy or where you might focus your training or your processes to improve that. And the velocity of capture, as, as I continuously refer to, is is where we spend a lot of time looking at individual attorneys, where you know who is performing better, who is not performing. When you're averaging five days. You, that that in that you have attorneys that are participating at two three days and other ones that are over ten days, and that is significantly uh, that has a significant impact on the firm, um, and it obviously uh, from from a quality perspective, but also at the end of the month as I referred. Uh, one uh, uh, <clears throat> the other uh, we that we do in an audit is we take a look at who's participating in time capture, how many attorneys are participating, how many assistants are participating. One of the things that we're trying to promote again is this concept of collaboration. I want the attorneys to produce, to participate um, sufficiently, and that I want them to contemporaneously capture time, but don't spend too much time in timekeeping. The assistant provides a better value resource to match that time entry. Is where you want to be focusing that more complex process of assigning a task, a phase, a, a location code, an assigning attorney, any of these four or five additional codes that are now present, even as much as client and match sometimes that an attorney might not have in hand. Uh, an assistant can help the attorney, things that they're more comfortable with. The support mechanism of the assistant is very important in, in producing the best uh, possible um, uh, process of timekeeping for the attorney. We want them to participate where they're comfortable in to participation and not the way around where we're forcing the process where they're not necessarily capable or, or have the time to do and then and then complain that they're not participating in time capture. This a lot of the work is being done. Uh, you know, this The audit, whether it's a net new, whether it's a new client or whether it's a reoccurring client, the, the audit gives us this information to help us understand where the bottlenecks are, where the problem spots are, who are uh, who are performing well, and then to understand why they're performing well versus other timekeepers. <clears throat> the, uh, interesting. Uh, the other metric that we promote, uh, that we look at, is the mobile. And this mobile statistics now is becoming more and more prevalent. When we, when you know, when uh, there are many um, mobile forms available for 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 attorneys to participate, whether it's iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches, any of these elements uh, with with Carpe Diem uh, have a touch point into our, uh, into our system. And again, uh, we've actually we get certain statistics, uh, uh, especially our, our firms that have mobile. Uh, um, we look uh, newfound time, which is a metric that is based on how many hours are tracked. Office hours, in other words, from six, let's say, from 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. the next morning, and in increments of less than 30 minutes or 15 minutes. These are activities that typically won't get 
if you go to a two, three-hour meeting on a, on a today evening, for example, you'll remember that and try the next day. But those 15-minute increments, those 30-minute increments that you do maybe at night, those are probably the type of activities that you won't track. So as we look at our metric for our mobile, for our mobile uh, uh, clients, we look at how much time is captured outside the office hours and in increments of 15 minutes or, or less. And that value is, is an important revenue stream to the firm in every case that we've done this analysis. Uh, just to give a, an idea of some of the, you know, how a summary of our audits might look like. So we look at incomplete time, not released time, velocity numbers. We look at, we try to, and this could be rolled in year after year just to look at the trends, see how our efforts are, you know, are helping or not helping. Um, Timekeeper entering their own time, seeing if there's an, an increase in participant based on technology, based on processes, based on training and mobile statistics. This is, again, this is something that we've perfected over the last four or five years, and I'd be happy to talk to anybody about this on a one-to-one -one basis. So, from the timekeeping audit, we've established the statistics. Since we have this data, we have to try to make some kind of sense to it. And what we do is we meet with, uh, with attorneys, understanding the timekeeping barriers, but also understanding what works. What are some of the things that work with some of the attorneys that we could use to 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 help um, track more timekeepers um, in partaking contemporaneously? Uh, Setable targets for next review periods, whether it's you know, reducing your incomplete time, having more, you know, obviously reducing the velocity metrics, which is very very important. Mobile time, uh, you know. Promoting and communicating mobile capture is an ongoing effort by, with all our clients. They're typically, uh, the, the firms are typically focused on it at, at implementation, but, but, but then fail to follow through long term. And so the, the, the successes, the continuous communication to promote mobile time capture, capture is essential to, again, to improve the revenue stream, but also to improve the quality of time capture. And constant communication of benefits and process changes. Process changes are difficult, but process changes are a lot easier when there's success tied into it. The audit allows you to create the success, allows you to communicate the successes, and attorneys then can understand, you know, the impact of them buying in to help them through uh, to gain a, to gain uh, or to um, the mobile. Very important that this is an ongoing process, a three to six month period between audits all provide us with a, uh, a, a better understanding of where we need to focus our energies. Quite, just just to look at uh, from a from a uh, from and again most of our efforts is always about improving the velocity of capture. Uh, and focus of our audits and focus of our training and everything that we do in terms of our participation from with clients from a process but also from an application and I'll take, take you through just a couple of brief slides to show you some of the that some of the things that we've now included into our new version of Carpe Diem generation that promote uh, not only the processes but the multiple touch points um, so is that, that those that capture points may have an impact beyond the one point. Uh, the, the promotion of timers is, uh, is something that you might want to consider within a firm because timers mean adequately create uh, in velocity. So we've talked about mobility. Timekeepers use mobile time capture at least once a week, achieve a velocity of capture of 60% closer to one one in non-mobile. So again, and time uh, mobile improves capture, improves improves quality. It also increases um, revenue. And that is that is we've seen that in every single audit that we've done for uh, <clears throat> for uh, timekeeping. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the ways that we've introduced uh, mobile over over time, and uh, and you can reach out to one of our um, uh, account executives, is that we've introduced mobile uh, through a pay yourself first, where uh, through that through that. Um, uh, that newfound time concept in mobile, uh, you only pay for the for the for the licensing once you've recuperated uh, your investment, but not your inve but only from a newfound time perspective. Again, from these snippets of 15 minute or less increments, uh, <clears throat> and uh, outside of office hours. Uh, again, we've uh, just to read a. Again, importance of contemporaneous capture, uh, better relations, less write-offs, uh, turns valuable time at month end journalizing their entries, and that the journalizing of your entries again is is a very important concept to understand. Yes, journalizing is, is sometimes necessary, but if your if your if your timekeeping effort is centered around uh, journalizing, uh, you're promoting inefficiencies. And so, uh, it, it promoting uh, increases in time capture. Quick look at some of the, uh, and I do want to open it up for questions. For questions, uh, some of the things that we have uh, um, this holistic capture approach that we've now introduced with our HTML5 next generation client, which is all touch compatible. It's a once, uh, it's a one area where you have your your work list, you have your timers. Uh, and have your um, your passive time, which uh, for Carpe Diem it's Time Finder, which we try to introduce uh, in your gaps of your day based on times or other activities. We try to introduce other activities, whether they're documents or whether they're emails, uh, putting a um, additional level of, um, of uh, awareness of where this passive time capture could fit in to uh, timekeeping. We also have introduced uh, through um, look, look uh, again for we're always trying to introduce capture points uh, for attorneys that won't, don't want to participate the same way. So if you have attorneys that uh, love spending their time in Outlook but want to participate, we have an ability for Outlook to create commentaries, which uh, again promotes multiple capture points. We we're trying to which throw the widest net possible to get timekeepers to participate. Anyway, device, uh, whether it's an iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, or even uh, with our HTML5 next generation, uh, any uh, on, uh, you know, whether it's um, uh, inside the office, outside the office, same interface, same touch point, same capture experience, which promotes again participation. Again, integrative, as I was speaking before, integrated, integrated smart passive time. In other words, trying to find in your day where the um, where the found time fits best into creating additional value uh, in addition to contemporaneous capture. And this is where we believe passive time capture fits best in in the strategy of of time capture uh, uh, specifically. And uh, with our products, we, some of the metrics that we talk about from the audit perspective, we also apply, we, we give them to you in real time as part of our management consoles, where we're looking at, looking at lack to capture, lack to release, and lack to bill all in dashboard so that, that people and attorneys can look at this and look at their performance, set their goals, and make sure that they're all working to the same goals. Uh, we talk about time, about time capture, and never mention time entry, and that is an important distinction, right? Uh, time capture uh, is about participation; it is about creating the best possible process within a firm. Time entry is after the fact. It's you know it, it's 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 create entries based on historical data, and probably not the most effective way. Uh, again. Forget about the rates, focus on quality and quality hours. Focus consumer technology. Focus on attorneys use, using this consumer technology. See where these, uh, where these technologies and, and the, your the behaviors uh, um, fit. Uh, 
metrics, do audits to to set these uh, use metrics from the beginning, create the processes, use the audits to validate uh, the effort that you're doing, um, and. So and uh, and the time and, and and do spend a lot of time on evolving these best practices and communicating to the firm based on the value that it brings to uh, the firm in the end. I will now open it up to any questions and answer any questions. May to ask a question? Please press star one. Record your name and press the pound sign. To withdraw your question, please press star. Two. Please press star 1 to begin. Motion, please press star 1, record your name, then press the pound sign. I, 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 uh, th th there appears to be no questions. That's my uh, my personal information, my uh, contact information. Please feel free to drop me an email if you have any questions that comes up later. If not, I'll be uh, looking forward to seeing as many of you at DILTA uh, and catching up with, uh, uh, with you. Thank you. Thank you for your participation in today's conference. This concludes the presentation. You may now disconnect and have a great day.